Welcome back. Maybe you're feeling tempted and wondering what would happen if you look at the sun with your naked eye. Could you recover? Yeah, well, we have an expert optometrist here in studio with us. This is Dr. Paul Kimbrough. He's the director of clinical services at Southfield Supervision Center. Thanks for joining us, by the yeah, way. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. Appreciate the opportunity. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah. So uh, to answer the question, what happens if you look directly at an eclipse? Yeah. I think a lot of people are tempted. Just the basic bottom line question. I mean, it's the main thing. Yeah, so the main concern is when you're staring at the sun, even with a partial eclipse, the radiant energy of the sun can actually burn the back of the retina. We call that solar retinopathy, which can ultimately result in loss of central vision, distorted vision, loss of colored vision. So to your point, don't do it unless you have the approved eclipse viewers on or the solar viewers. Yeah, I must say I'm a little bit nervous. I know uh, my preschooler, she's three and a half, yep. they're doing a viewing um, with with the glasses, mm -hmm. but at that age, I mean, you also have little kids. You're like, can you really make them? Not I know. Look with, it it keep goes kind of <laughs> yeah. It goes hand in hand with you know, they, you want them to be able to see it, but keeping a piece of cardboard on their face is tricky. So if yeah. you have a quick glance up there, what happens with just you know a quick glance before you go? No, 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 don't do that. Yeah. Right. So the reality is, to your point, kids are probably going to unfortunately peak. We do know from studies that you probably have to be staring at the eclipse for longer durations than just a split second. But it's better to be safe than sorry. We want to stay on top of young children and adults, making sure we're not staring without proper eclipse glasses on. Gotcha. And what about sunglasses? Because a lot of folks I've heard yeah. this morning are like, well, I have some really dark, good sunglasses. Yeah, it's a great question. We got that in our clinic this morning. Even the dilation shades that we give to patients, patients are asking if they can wear those. The answer, unfortunately, is no. The only thing that's actually approved to prevent uh, the, the harmful damage of solar retinopathy is the approved eclipse glasses. Sunglasses won't do it. Those dilation shades we give out won't do it either. Gotcha. Yeah. Now, kind of on that topic, just to even go along with that, yeah. you have different sunglasses that people wear all the way through the year from the cheap ones they grab out of a claw machine or to the you know big expensive ones whatever they might be sure you know we get in we're getting into the summer months and today is a really bright day so even before we get to the eclipse when they're using those special glasses to look at it you're sitting outside on a bright sunny day just like this what is the big importance that somebody needs to know when it comes to their sunglasses because if they're just out there on a sunny day like this they could be getting damaged too at the same time. Yeah and to your point in Michigan even in the winter with snow reflecting bright light we have UV exposure all year long and so UVA, UVB blocking sunglasses polarized is great adds to the quality of the image that you're going to get but as long as your sunglasses are UVA, UVB you're going to protect yourself from the sun and protect yourself from cataract formation, macular degeneration, all the things that we know are associated with long-term UV exposure. So if, I mean, some of them, like the really cheap ones, they, they have like UV, like they only have one of them labeled. So if you only have one protected, I mean, does that still put you at risk or what, what goes along with only having one of those covered? Well, it's certainly better than nothing to your point, but the different uh, UVAs will, or UVA and UVB will penetrate different areas of the eye. So. It's better to have both if you can. Spend a little extra money to have both when you can. Mm -hmm. Now, what about folks who wear just glasses on a day to day and were to, to glimpse up and, and just uh, like about an hour <laughs> now? I'm still in this eclipse. I know. Is it even more dangerous yeah. to look through a, a glasses lens? I mean, we are, we are just trying to warn folks this yeah. is what you shouldn't be doing. Well, agreed. And I think today's such an amazing experience. We want people to be able to view the eclipse, but to do it safely. Uh, your prescription sunglasses are not enough. You can put eclipse glasses over your sun, uh, prescription eyeglasses, but they're not enough to view the eclipse for any duration of time. Mm -hmm. And for folks who um, have difficulty seeing, um, are there ways for them to, to safely see this as well? I mean, would it be those, the same glasses? Yeah, so exactly. Uh, your prescription eyeglasses are going to be the place to start. Um, and then from there, of course, we've seen today people have the opportunity to use pinhole projectors. That's a great way to view it. Um, but always starting with your prescription sunglasses and then looking directly at the eclipse, putting uh, eclipse glasses over top or a solar viewer would be the way to do it. So if somebody looked for too long, yeah. you know, is this lasting damage or is there or is this something where, you know, maybe depending on age, somebody mm -hmm. over time that can be regenerated? What, what happens then? So unfortunately, no. Uh, if you were to stare at the eclipse today, especially um, for a long duration of time and, and have a diagnosis of solar retinopathy, it can dramatically change your central vision permanently. So we, we expect you know, that if you're 20, 20 and you stare at the eclipse and have solar retinopathy, your vision could, could drop to somewhere to 20, 40, even 20, 50. And that's not reversible, unfortunately, which is why we're educating people today. So that's, mm -hmm. I mean, 
be well beyond any type of knowledge that I've got for that. So when you're talking about obviously the, the big decrease from harm from the sun then, yeah. is this something where, you know, you had TVs in the past that had a little burn in, or you're looking around and you see dots if you look at the sun or it's too bright, right? Is that something where you get that or does it just decrease your vision or are you stuck with seeing like, you know, sparks and everything in your eyes for a while? No, so you would just expect a decrease in the clarity of a patient's central vision. Okay. Um, maybe even distorted vision, kind of wavy vision. Altered color perception would be something that could be long standing after a solar retinopathy event. Um, so yeah, I think that. Okay. So folks who are feeling, uh, who are experiencing these symptoms, um, what should they do? They should go to their, to their eye doctor? Yes, please. Uh, if in the hours or days after the eclipse, you're feeling like you've lost central vision, distortion of vision, loss of color perception, you're seeing a white spot in the center of vision, please make an appointment with an eye doctor, uh, an optometrist or ophthalmologist. We have lots of resources, Henry Ford Optimize um, have partners with us to be able to allow for annual eye exams. So please uh, schedule an appointment and, and at least have it looked at. Yeah, and be safe, right? I mean, this yes. is just the most important thing. I know it's tempting to take a oh, yeah. gander up uh, <laughs> in the sky, <laughs> but go, oh, hey. not worth it. You no. know, you, you very clearly laid out today what just the really scary effects that can happen. Permanent damage can happen to your vision. Yep. Absolutely, very and that's concerning. and that's why we've got Troy out there too today to be able to tell, talk about different ways that people can do yeah, it. Yeah, this is interesting. <laughs> yeah, just like how does this work? I, I'm, I'm looking at people looking through boxes. So that's the thing, using a box like this, I mean you still get a really bright spot in there and Troy's walking you through the steps as well. I don't want to steal it completely from him, but uh, I mean that bright spot that's reflected off of just a white piece of paper in there, is that still safe or should somebody still be no, very safe. So okay. that's a perfect uh, substitute for if you don't have eclipse glasses today and you can you can make one of those, that's a way to view it very safely. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I do have a pair of eclipse glasses here, hey, actually. Hey. All right. <laughs> and I was, I was struck because they are so dark. I mean, we are in a really bright TV studio and with really bright lights, and it's hard to even see those. So it's, I mean, these are really, really heavy duty. But um, anyway. Hopefully everyone out there <laughs> viewing, I know that was pointless. Um, Cooler than sunglasses though. That's right. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Paul Kimber, yeah, for welcome. joining you. us today and for explaining what can happen if you Thanks for being long. here. Thanks for having me.